Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a close look at a new flagship robot from Roborock, the S7 Max V. It has a few upgrades over the S7 released in 2021, but are they enough to justify the $200 price increase over the S7? I've been testing the S7 Max V in my home for a little over two months now, and I'll answer that question by the end of this video. Roborock is keeping the design of the S7 Max V pretty simple as it's only offered in black. It does have some red accents on the side, which is a nice touch. On the bottom, it looks identical to the S7 with its unique floating roller brush that gets it super close to the floors. The all rubber roller brush is unchanged and includes easy to remove ends. The mopping pad is very easy to remove and the water tank is as well. The water tank holds around 200 milliliters of water and is compatible with the new Ultra Dock, which can automatically keep this tank topped off for you. On the bottom, there is a set of charging contacts, an ultrasonic carpet detection sensor, single side spinning brush, and six cliff sensors to keep it from falling down a flight of stairs. On the top, there is a multi-purpose LED status light which changes color based on what the robot is doing. You have three buttons, a spot cleaning button, a power button, and a home button to send it back to the dock. The three holes on top are the microphone for the new two-way video calling. The LiDAR cover is a clickable sensor to prevent unwanted damage. Under the deck lid is a reset button and a Wi-Fi indicator light. Included is the 400 milliliter dustbin that is compatible with both the Ultra Dock and the older Auto Empty Dock. Up top is a removable filter that you will need to frequently keep clean. I found the internal dustbin a bit harder to clean out over the dustbins in the older Roborock models like the S6. This is mostly because of a design change that makes it compatible with the empty docks. The dustbin simply clicks back into place Notice the word Hyperforce, which denotes the more powerful motor in the S7 Max V. On the front of the robot is where big changes come in. Roborock calls their object avoidance system Reactive AI, which was first found in the Roborock S6 Max V. Roborock made many hardware and software improvements with this system. They have a single camera, an all new and faster neural processing unit, integrated LED lights so it can see in the dark, and what Roborock is calling a 3D structured light sensor. All this tech is bundled together to create Reactive AI 2.0. Not only does it allow the robot to detect certain hazards in your home like pet waste, shoes, wires, and socks, but it can also detect furniture types, room types, and even the type of floor you have so it can customize its cleaning based on the room and floor type. On the front sides, you will also notice a pair of charging contacts for the Ultra Dock. In my testing, I found the object avoidance worked well most of the time. As you can see here, it does a good job of avoiding these objects in my test. It gets closer to some objects while staying well clear of the pet waste, which is normally a good thing. Where I feel it falls short is with cords and shoes. With cords, if you have a single cord laying across the floor, the reactive AI may not be able to detect it. This is because it can only detect objects that are wider than 5 centimeters and taller than 3 centimeters. It did fine if the cord was in a bundle, but bundle cords are not often our issue. The same thing with shoes. If a shoe had shoelaces untied, the robot would often get too close and get stuck on the shoelace. If only Roborock would treat shoes and cords like animal waste, we'd be okay. The good news here is Roborock has already made several firmware updates to improve object avoidance and will continue to do so in the future. The next added feature of Reactive AI is their new video calling feature which allows for two-way audio with video transmission. Don't worry because by default it comes disabled and it's not just as simple as clicking a button in the app to enable it either. Finally, Reactive AI was able to properly detect all of my floor types, which are carpet, wood, and tile. A new feature also allows Reactive AI to detect a few different types of furniture like beds, 
sofas, and dining room tables. It allows you to select the furniture in the app and send the robot out to do a cleaning around that furniture. You can also manually add the furniture to your floor plan in the app as well. I found the features of detecting furniture, rooms, and floor types to only be sort of helpful. If you've seen my review of the S7, you will know that it is one of the best all-around cleaning robot vacuums on the market. Whether it's vacuuming on hard floors or carpet, it consistently picks up more than the competition. This is basically unchanged from the S7, but Roborock has added an extra power mode called Max Plus, which should more than double the vacuum power to 5100 pascals over the 2500 pascals found in the S7. In my testing, the S7 Max V is still a very impressive robot vacuum with excellent pickup ability on all floor types. I used the Hyperforce Max Plus mode in all of my tests. I first tested it on tile floor by scattering 130 grams of cat litter. It was able to pick up a very impressive 117 grams after one single pass. Next, I tested the S7 Max V on carpet. I scattered 54 grams of rice on medium pile carpet and allowed the S7 one pass to pick up as much as it could. It was able to pick up 49 grams of rice, which is one of the best results of any robot vacuum. Let's talk about mopping. The S7 Max V retains the same exact mopping system found on the S7, which is good news. The Viberize mopping system can vibrate the mopping pad at 3000 revolutions per minute. And also with the aid of the ultrasonic carpet sensor, it has the ability to detect carpet and lift the mopping pad a few millimeters to clear low pile carpet and rugs, which is a first of its kind on any robot vacuum and one feature I am a huge fan of. Roborock gives you a few options in mopping mode. First, you can choose between three different scrub intensities, which range from mild to intense, and you can also select between standard and deep mopping. The main difference is deep mopping will use a tighter zigzag cleaning pattern, which is best for dirty stains. In my test, I pre-wet the mopping pad and ran the S7 in deep mopping mode with the scrub level set to intense. I had it mop up dried on hot sauce and the S7 Max V cleaned up nearly all of the hot sauce. This is one of the most impressive mops you can find on a robot vacuum. Now let's talk about the app. Roborock has one of the best apps for a robot vacuum that I've tested to date. Once connected, you will need to start mapping your house and you'll have the option of quick mapping, which can make the mapping process much quicker. When I tested, this option was not yet available, so I went with the longer mapping process. Once it's done mapping, you are left with needing to finish dividing and labeling your rooms. You're basically dividing and merging areas on the map, and when complete, you can label each room and customize the placement of furniture. The app is very feature rich, and Roborock has managed to add even more tech with the S7 Max V. If you have an iPhone, there is a matrix mode. However, I don't have an iPhone, so I was not able to test this out. You can now choose to view the map in 3D instead of 2D. The 3D version looked neat, but for now it only works when used with a full house cleaning. If you select room or zone cleaning, you're automatically switched back to 2D. I plan to release a full app tutorial for the S7 Max V since Roborock has added a bunch of new changes over the S7 and way too many to get into in this video. The S7 Max V is basically an S7 with the addition of reactive AI, more powerful vacuum motor, and some neat app features. There is, however, one last thing that sets the S7 Max V apart from the older brother of the S7, which is the ability to use the new Ultra Dock. The older original S7 will not be compatible with the new Ultra Dock. It's not physically possible. You must buy the S7 Max V in order to use it. I thought about putting the review for the dock in this video, but honestly, it deserves its own video. Not to spoil things here, but I'm extremely impressed with the dock and shocked at how well it is engineered. So go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss that one. Roborock does allow you to use the S7 Max V with the cheaper auto empty dock released in 2021, which by itself is fantastic. You have options with the S7 Max V, which is something I like. Okay, let's move on to my conclusion now. While the S7 Max V on paper has more than double the suction power in Max Plus mode, 
I did not find it made a difference in my day-to-day -day cleaning or in any of the tests when compared to the S7. This is not a bad thing though, since the S7 and the S7 Max V are excellent vacuums. However, I'm not sure if I would buy the S7 Max V for the increased power alone. The new Reactive AI is a welcome addition to an already excellent cleaner and something every pet owner should consider. Roborock is making improvements every day and the only real negative I have found is it gets too close to some objects and still struggles to avoid cords. I really applaud Roborock for pushing the envelope with the new creative app features. A few of them like the 3D map and the ability to detect all floor types are a look into what is the future of home automation. Keep it up Roborock engineers, well done. With it retailing for a little over $200 more than the S7, there are really two main justifications for buying this over the S7. Reactive AI and the ability to use the Ultra Dock. If either one of those are important to you, then take a close look at the S7 Max V. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. If you've not already done so, please subscribe to my channel. It helps support the work I do here and will help me put out more videos. All right, if you have any questions, please make sure you drop those down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.